Look at Chet dialing all the dials and moving all the things around to make sure we got all the microphones actually working in here. Pretty spiffy there, my friend. Because um, we got uh, some folks, uh, more folks than normal in the studio, but that's cool. Um, you got half your uh, your radio crew in here. Yuri Rashkin, you're the president of this uh, new broadcast operation, correct? That's, that's what they call me. Yeah, okay. Right. Da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> Janesville Community Radio has been on the internet for about, what, two years? A year and a half, yeah. Okay. Um, and kind of always with this vision, I know that uh, at some point you would become an actual radio broadcast station using the airwaves. Um, and as we've watched it go through that process, uh, you're very nearly to that stage and you have uh, a license, which you acquired, uh, the organization acquired about a year ago, I think. Um, and, uh, you're right now working on the finishing touches that would put a r- new radio station, uh, W. ADR. ADR yes. I always want to do. I always want to invert those two. ADR FM yes, yes. Uh, on the air. So uh, this is a different sort of station than people might be used to, uh, because we don't have, to my knowledge, any other low power FMs in the immediate area. So people might not be used to exactly what that entails. So I thought we should start from there. When you when you flip the switch on this thing and it goes on, it. I, I don't think we could define it as a flamethrower, as some of the big stations like to call themselves that have a giant... <laughs> no, we're not going to be like a 50,000 watts you had. But, um, first of all, Tim, I want to thank you and, and everyone in WCLO for having us here. But It's, it's awesome. Uh, we're a small community station, and uh, I think most communities should have... Well, all communities should have a community radio station, and uh, this is something that was uh, put together by FCC. had a one-time window where we could apply... Uh, we put together a group of volunteers who are interested in applying. We put together an application, and that's kind of what launched the radio club because while the application was being reviewed and while the process was underway, we need, we knew that one of the things that FCC was require, going to require us to do is to have 36 hours of programming on the air a week, mm-hmm. and that means that we had to have something. So uh, we had uh, different shows that kind of came together. Some of them went away. New ones started, and that's a, it's a continuous process. It's all volunteer. We have... Currently, over 30 volunteers who are involved with uh, WADR. But being an LP station, we really don't know how far we'll be able to reach on FM dial. We're going to be at 103.5. Mm-hmm. And uh, once the tower is completed, the transmitters installed, all those good things, we're going to be driving around for several days. <laughs> <laughs> and just going, eh, I can hear this. And I'm hoping that it will be you know, heard further than uh, just your studio here. <laughs> well, yeah, there, yeah. I think we'd be able to get. Well, I can't right. even get this station in in the studio without <laughs> it. So um, that's an interesting dynamic. But um, I saw, in general terms, uh, I think they estimate anywhere, depending on terrain and all that kind of stuff, three to ten miles. That's, that's exactly kind of what right. They said, yeah. So, um, so it's it's not gonna. It's meant to be, I guess, as you say, a community radio station that it will serve. It's the community in which it's. Absolutely, I, I think that you know I'm a big fan of Kurt Vonnegut, and he said that. Um, then in, in the olden times, you would have one storyteller in, in every uh, group, and uh, then through corporate culture, you know, you don't need so many storytellers, and, and that kind of opportunity went away. But I think we have a great community with lots of people who can tell good stories and have a point of view, and they could kind of share their take on what's going on around, and a way to connect community in a more direct and ongoing way where we can be. Right now, we have about 20 different shows and DJs, and I'm glad to have three of them with me here. Um, but uh, we're looking to grow because we can be 24-7, so there's opportunity. Yeah, there's no, obviously, maximum limit, but you've got to fill a minimum, as I right. understand it. Um, and and the way these are set up, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're sort of, sort of like Wisconsin Public Radio in that they can't, you can't, you're not going to be able to go out there and sell commercials, per se, or, or do things that a, that a typical radio station might. Right. Uh, you're limited in in some of those fashions, so right. are, you're. Gonna... It's, it's a really interesting license as we got to know it because, uh, like, there's a, a very popular community radio station in Madison, W O R T, mm-hmm. that uh, they raise all their funds through pledge drives. Yep, we can't do that, um, because of our license. But what we can have is we can have underwriting spots, which has to, like you said, follow very specific language of similar to national public radio, mm-hmm. and that's part of our training. So um, th- that's you know one of the exciting things is. Uh, we partnered with Beloit Snappers, and mm-hmm. so I'm very excited that Voice of the Snappers, David Kraft, is here with us because um, we had to just rework their their whole advertising approach because, you know, for, for their commercials to play on our station, we had to rewrite everything in a very 
you know, subtle, nondescript manner, but, you know, that still gets the, the word out about what's going on. So it's uh, interesting challenges. I, I'm, I'm sure it is. Well, before we run out of time, and I know this is going to go by fast, Yuri, so I, let's, let's, uh, let's have you introduce the guys that are here, uh, some of the compliment of folks that are currently on the online version of the station, which All right. will go live here soon. Um, we have David Kraft, who is voice of the Snappers. We have uh, Shannon Michaels of uh, Shannon Michaels Rock and Radio Show, and we had a picture of uh, Shannon on our Facebook page in, because he's uh, Brett Michaels impersonator, and people thought that maybe we did have Brett Michaels in the studio <laughs> for a while. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's great promo. And then we have uh, John Norquay, who hosts a financial advice program of uh, Pivot Point Advisors. And uh, so, gentlemen, if you'd like to say hello. Hello. But, yeah, just pull the microphone towards you at that point. You're, we got to both each share in a mic here, two guys. So uh, start with, uh, with David. Hi, my name is David Kraft. I uh, am currently uh, the voice of the Snappers, and I found out I need glasses uh, <laughs> through baseball. I never knew my eyesight until uh, um, it was an extra inning game going into 11th inning, and uh, the batter, bases loaded, Max Kuhn, hit one that was about a half foot foul down the line, and I called it the fair game-winning hit. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was good times. You, you, you could be an umpire. <laughs> <laughs> I could be an umpire. That's exactly it. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'll tell you, Bob Euchre makes it seem very easy. It's uh, daunting calling a baseball game, but I enjoy it. It's, it's, uh, it's great. I'm very glad to be uh, part can you of this. Can talk about your extensive experience in broadcasting? You have uh, extensive experience in broadcasting? You have none. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I know the FCC's intention Yuri, was to to do exactly that and put uh, some more voices in communities uh, onto the airwaves. And, and obviously, it's like anything else. People like it or they don't like it, and they listen or they don't listen. And it, in that regard, it's no different than a commercial radio station. Um, so um, it... it Probably does give you a little bit of appreciation for it. It's it's not as easy as it looks in a lot of cases. <laughs> well, well, the good thing is I work hard at what I do. I am a workaholic, which means when someone mentions work, I drink. So <laughs> you know, I'll be there through all the, through the whole. All thing, right. Well, so. good thing isn't at least uh, well, seven to nine in the city. Twelve in <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go uh, over to Shannon. Uh, morning. Good morning. Uh, Shannon Michaels. Um, actually, an award-winning Brett Michaels impersonator lookalike. You do look like him. I <laughs> uh, won a word in Vegas and Orlando. Um, but, yeah, I uh, started with these guys after um, I was interviewed by the Monday Night Shuffle uh, with... Um, uh, Jens Jorgensen. Yeah, Jens Jorgensen. Yeah, I haven't seen him since then, really. So It's been a, been a while since I've seen him. But anyway, so, uh, and then next thing I know, I'm getting an inbox from Mary and asked me if I wanted my own show, and I'm sure, like, yeah. Everybody always said I had a radio voice. So. <laughs> but anyways, so... Um, yeah, and my show's uh, playing a lot of, uh, like, uh, 80s, 90s hair band kind of uh, upbeat. And uh, the show is, I try and keep it as upbeat as possible. I do promote um, a lot of local charities. So if there's any um, local charities in the area, I always tell them to email me what it is, and then I'll try and get the word out for mm -hmm. that. Uh, because I do charity work myself, I show up for two events for free for... Um, Anything local for photo ops and, and uh, meet and greet and stuff. Nice. So. Your show is what? Uh, is, is a regularly scheduled time slot? Once yeah, right a now we're week once a day. Whatever. Yeah, we're right now we're on. Uh, I'm on Friday uh, from eleven till noon, uh, and then we're going to be. I'm going to be opening up probably till ten till noon. Okay, um, that's an interesting dynamic with music on the station because uh, if you stay away from music, which we found years ago it's a lot cheaper because you don't have any uh, music rights fees. But if you start playing music, Correct. you've got to deal with those. And I'm assuming that the same is still true on an LPFM. Absolutely. And that's uh, you know part of the reason that we're raising money because uh, we need to pay for copyrights. But it seems like music is one of those things that um, people really associate with radio and, uh, and to provide a variety because um, I, I think that uh, the, the current market formats are – Fairly few, and uh, what I, and you see this right here. Mm -hmm. um, every one of our shows reaches a slightly different demographic, sure. and and that's wonderful because we can bring different people from a community together. And maybe somebody likes the you know one hour of reggae here, or ska, or rock, or uh, snappers, or whatever. So it's kind of the variety of it. But we do have to pay first online fees and then uh, over the air fees. But it's a there's a couple of organizations out there that help LP stations such as ours because we're 
applied for a 501c3 status. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, the, the license is held by United Arts Alliance, mm -hmm. which is a 501c3, and we have a fiscal sponsorship with them. So uh, financial contributions uh, to us are tax deductible. And uh, the, uh, the interesting thing about the, the music thing is um, people are shocked when they find out that it costs money. I know when, whenever we talk to people about WJBL, <laughs> they're shocked when you know our second biggest expense after you know, personnel in commercial right. radio is the music licensing fees. And they're like, and you they, probably have they much charge you to play that? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that yeah, funny? <laughs> but you also have a far, you know, the, the fees are based on the reach, and you mm -hmm. have a far greater reach than we will. Yeah. And so your fees are higher, too. Yeah. So. Uh, and then the Internet thing is a whole other thing. But, again, people don't, a lot of people don't know that. But if, you are, uh, if, if you're doing it above board... Uh, and you're playing music on a... Uh, yeah, because otherwise we're playing Yuri Rashkin's piano music for a year. That was just not <laughs> Yuri fair. Can choose not, <laughs> Yuri can choose not to pay himself rights fees if he wants to. But, you guys uh, need to get a Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> they don't pay any, any rights. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a lot of dynamics in there. I'm sure you've uh, spent a lot of time. I'm, I'm sure you've had a great education as Absolutely, this has gone yes. along. Uh, let's make sure that we uh, hear from John here this morning, too. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. John Norquay. I've been an uh, investment advisor for 23 years, and we just moved to the area about a year and a half ago. Spent most of my adult career in the Madison area. We had our first grandchild in town here, so we just couldn't Great. stay away. So. <laughs> so here we are. So you do a financial show? Yeah. You know, I am, uh, I am not a fan of Wall Street, even though that's in my industry, I, I'm not. I can't mm -hmm. hardly take asset allocation because you know they tell you how it takes the risk away, and yet people lost fifty percent of their portfolios twice in the last twelve yeah. years. You know, there's just there's better ways, and I just, you know, so go you, for those. So you're out there. Uh, yeah, you're 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 kind of uh, in in the wild west of of well, yeah, you know, like business like category. Most advisors don't spend any time on helping people's social security because mm -hmm. there's no money in it. You know, and yet right. there's it's such a huge area and so much money for, you know, the economy and for the individuals. It's just, man, maximizing it. You wouldn't think that there was a lot you could do, but there's a ton. So, you know, just things like that. Just uh, I don't consider myself to be part of the advisor community. <laughs> but, <laughs> I think but, John, uh, was, uh, John was our for, like one of our first hosts that uh, people would call in and say, I really enjoyed that guy. Yeah. So, you know. Well, and it's, you know, the, the dynamics of putting, you know. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could hear that once in a while. That'd be nice. Uh, the dynamics of, of finding talent, putting talent on the air, finding things that people uh, seem to like is uh, is an ongoing struggle, as I'm sure you already know, and we'll, we'll continue to learn, and we, we experience it here on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, we've got to take a quick commercial break, <laughs> which Yuri will never have to do on WADR. <laughs> but we've got to take a quick break here, and we will be back uh, with the folks from Janesville Community Radio, WADR-FM, in just a couple of minutes on your talk show on WCLO. So uh, very soon you will have yet another place to spend your time that's not um, on your internet gaming thing. And you can actually find out stuff going on uh, in the community and, and get a little different flavors of a lot of things. Uh, that's It sounds to me, Yuri, like that, that, that's kind of uh, what you've got going on at Janesville Community Radio. And we're talking with uh, some of the gang from uh, WADR, which will go on the air very soon. Well, and um, that's, that's so true because, you know, I just kind of wanted to give you a kind of brief rundown of some of the mm -hmm. programs that we have now. Um, like on Monday, we have uh, Mindful Mondays with Esther Turner. And I think you know Esther. Mm -hmm. She does health and wellness. And that's fantastic. Then at 2 p.m., we have Oscar Wilson, who is a singer for Cashbox Kings. And he is our DJ playing blues every Monday for two hours. Okay. Then on Monday night, we have Jens Jorgensen, who is Andy Jorgensen's state representative, Jorgensen's mm -hmm. son. And he is just all over radio. Then we have, on Tuesday, we have John. Uh, then Edie Barron does Art Spark, where she interviews um, artists and such. Um, we have, at 6 p.m. on Tuesday nights, we have Christ in the City with Ray Jewell. And that's a, you know, Ray's a pretty conservative fellow, mm -hmm. so he's, he's got it, you know, it's, it's awesome. Um, then we have uh, uh, Daddy-O, who is Bob Keith, my program, Discover Janesville. We've got um, Shannon, we've got DJ Lalo, who's spinning records. 
Um, we've got Wisconsin Sports Report. You know, it's an, an open mic, of course, which is uh, Chad Sheridan and Andy Anderson. And it's it's a, such a neat mix of people. I really think that we're going to be this kind of opportunity for a creative outlet for a certain type of people because we bring that ground uh, grassroots media, but we also have some technology, and, and it kind of it brings together interesting people. Yeah. What is what is the dynamic? In, as you move this thing from the Internet to the air, mm-hmm. um, Obviously, when you're on the internet, yeah, you can stream live and we're going to spread uh, our little wings and fly. And you can, but then you archive the shows and people can listen to them on yeah. podcast. And okay, um, when when you flip the switch and and you're live on the radio and it, and it's going out in exactly the same time that you say it, and there's not much you can do to stop it, sort of thing. <laughs> um, uh, are people gonna are, are people gonna have to get used to an idea that you know there's a show on from ten to eleven and then nothing from eleven to noon and then or are you gonna try to shoot for you know eleven to six every day or something like that so that there's some regularity or how's that gonna work for you? Actually, we were planning on being on internet and FM at the same time starting in June, but because Snapper season started early uh, for obvious reasons, mm-hmm. uh, we started our online broadcasting and that allowed us to kind of do a soft launch. But if people go to jamesillcommunityradio.com now, and we're very lucky because we have an app in both iTunes and Google and all that stuff, but we're now broadcasting 24-7. Now, granted, you might hear the same program a few times throughout the week, but considering that we're kind of building a brand, it's not the worst thing that you can hear Esther Turner here or there in you know, a few mm-hmm. different places, and uh, the same with the Sports Report or any other show. So we're trying to, you know, it's, it's a decision that, you know, we're making, like you said, we're learning so much. We're making a lot of decisions on... Do we want to be 100% local? Do we want to be 90% local, 80%? Do we want to bring different podcasts that are maybe not heard in the area and incorporate them into our schedule? And those are decisions that we're going to keep adjusting. You know, we have a board and everything. But uh, for now, we're 100% local 24-7. So it's just, it, it may not always be live, but right. it's 100% locally originated. Right. Um, and then you do like we do. Uh, there's encores, if you want to call them that. But, right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, yeah. uh, it's like, you know, we, we've come across that. And that's, you know, that's the nature of things. Television's having that same struggle. I think they um, should just loop mine 24 7. I think you should just yeah. camp out 24 <laughs> 7. Yeah. It's been a lot more, too. You know, that's a nice building. <laughs> I love the old, the old style building. So, hey, yeah, I fit right in then. Uh, what is the studio setup like for you? The uh, studio is we're at 321 East Milwaukee Street. And uh, we're actually going to have a new sign up front because we're my office JVL. We're transitioning as in we're. We still have some office space for rent, but we're also the station is occupying most of the second floor, and uh, we have uh, space for two studios and an office, which is you know what community station usually has mm-hmm. a couple of office you know a couple of studios and an office, and um, we're just uh, broadcasting from there. We have the fact that there's so many people are contributing their time and talents and effort means that we're kind of growing in all sorts of directions at almost unpredictable pace because somebody has time and they'll come in and do all you know we have gardening committee. Because people really care about, you know, we have people who are interested mm-hmm. in making the building prettier. And then we kind of have the sense of ownership, and it's really cool. So um, for, for you guys, uh, you're going to get rich off this deal at some point then, right? Or, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rich in do the you, heart. Do you That's pay? Exactly. <laughs> rich in the heart. That sounds like a song. Do you, do you, yeah, do do you, you, know, you, pay, do you pay your hosts or your I, I will say, I will say oh. that uh, this is something that is very much a discussion right now on the board level because it is my vision that we launch lots of little media businesses. I would love nothing more than if everybody had their own sponsors and uh, people were making a couple of bucks because no one's going to get rich, over, you know, like rich in heart, like you know, Shannon said. But why not pay people something for their time if they're able to find businesses that want to support their programs? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, so right now everybody's, you know, volunteer. But with time, we're hoping that more and more shows are going to have sponsors. And like I mentioned, the underwriting opportunities, it's a little different beast. And I've never worked at a radio station so, you know, we, we're actually lucky because once in a while somebody comes in and says, I used to work at a radio station. We're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're learning a lot, but it's a, it's a great opportunity. Well, it is. Uh, it, it's a, it's an interesting business. It's a fun business. Uh, you've got some interesting dynamics that, you know, I, I am, because I'm in the business, curious about on a personal level as, as how that will all shake out. They don't give you the ability to reach a critical mass of people that would make it extraordinarily easy for you to walk in and say, hey, we're this station. And they go, oh, yeah, I know about you. And, uh, yeah, I'd underwrite your show because if you go to Beloit, no, <laughs> probably they're not going to be able to tune you in. Uh, thank goodness there's the Internet now right. or, or you, you, it would be really hard. 
Well, it's, it's, um, a, so it's a different of, challenge for, you, for a you know, It power. is a variety of, uh, of revenue sources. And, uh, for instance, we're super excited because uh, Jeff Helgeson uh, contributed $5,000 to this project. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, because he felt that this was an interesting, good project for the community. Sure. So, uh, and that's not necessarily it's going to happen with projects like WCLO because that just doesn't, not how it's set up. So we have, you know. Yeah, we send him a bill. We send him an actual bill. You know, when I uh, I was talking with uh, some of the the, uh, executives down in Beloit, and uh, I was talking with uh, Bobby Kuhn, uh, and he works in marketing down there, and I asked him that question, like you just said Mm -hmm. to him about Beloit, because, you know, I'm I'm calling the games for the Beloit snappers, yet it's not going to reach all of Beloit. Right. And he said they know that, and they said Janesville is the market they want. Yeah, they pretty said, much everybody in Beloit knows about the Beloit Snappers, but yeah. if they could get 10% of the population in Janesville down to every snapper game, they'd be in really good shape. You mentioned about the players so. in the dugout, how they were kept running running out on the, after the announcement. Is it? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I'll start. You can finish. But I love it because uh, Dave was saying he couldn't figure out how, after all the announcements, because there's announcements between the innings, the players would run on, on the oh. baseball diamond. It was like, it's like ma- magic. You know, it turns out they were listening. I'm <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. Well, uh, best of luck, guys. Um, Thank you. you got a you got a firm date when uh, when we're going to be able to go to 103.5 and it's going to no. be there. Or? No, okay, all right. Well, <laughs> well, you'll keep us posted. And, Absolutely, and we'll but you know, there. social media that's where it really helps to get the word out with you know low budgets. All right, W A D R F M 103.5 coming Thank you. soon Thank you. to Janesville. Thanks, Thank guys. Have Thank a good you weekend. For Thanks. We'll be right back in your talk show on WCLO Janesville Beloit.